Most people who visit East Tennessee immediately fall in love with the rivers, the mountains, the greenery, and the tremendous resource that is the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The University of Tennessee is located in Knoxville, Tennessee, in a tremendously attractive area with respect to natural resources, and we are also at a crossroads of two of the major interstate highways. The University of Tennessee is the flagship university um, in the state of Tennessee, so it has, it is a comprehensive university, it has uh, almost all programs that a student could wish to find here. It has excellent faculty, it has wonderful facilities. Our university is embarked on a plan to become a top 25 public research university. We are benchmarking ourselves against the very best universities in the United States. We believe we are recruiting extraordinarily high quality faculty to teach our students and we are trying to support all of them as much as we can. One has to keep in mind that the University of Tennessee's undergraduate student body is about 88% local Tennessee students. Most of those students have never traveled further than maybe one state away from Tennessee. Tennessee is not a state that has a lot of uh, Asian people living in it. So for lots of students, what's going on with students coming here to study and faculty coming here to teach, these, this is the first opportunity to have academic interactions with people from China or any other Asian country, and certainly to have the level of cultural exchange that we're having. We have students who very much want to learn Chinese. Uh, the two languages that the United States knows we don't have enough people speaking is Chinese and Arabic. Beginning with the Ready for the World initiative, which started in 2005, the university has been very interested in internationalization. There's a lot to be gained by, uh, by studying one of the oldest, greatest civilizations. The immediate practical usefulness of knowing Chinese in today's market is going to make a student a very competitive job candidate. I think the deciding factor was the interest in internationalization on the campus. And here you've got the largest country in the world, one of the largest econ economies in the world, and uh, we wanted to increase our knowledge about China and China's knowledge about us. And the uh, interaction with students and faculty are one of the real important things that we can do to further that understanding. We know that uh, Professor Young of Southeastern University during a stint at the Chinese Embassy in Washington, D.C., traveled through East Tennessee and inquired as to whether or not a partnership with the University of Tennessee would be a useful collaboration. But it wasn't until 2009, 2010, that a professor in the political science department, Professor Yang Zhang, was contacted by Southeast University. And Southeast University asked him if UT would be interested in a Confucius Institute with them. Uh, Chinese Embassy actually sent a team uh, to have a site visit of UT, so I was involved in those kind of uh, steps in the application process. Because there were already two Confucius Institute, Institutes in the state of Tennessee, so Hanban for a while was trying to see whether or not a third Confucius Institute could be justified in the state of Tennessee. Then because uh, uh, UT is a flagship research university also, because of UT's reputation, Hanban thought it would be a good idea to have a Confucius Institute at UT. So they approved it uh, in 2012. So we then, I and Professor uh, Yang Zhang and Lisa Metter and Dr. Perong went to China in 2010 met with Southeast University and with Hanban, and from that point on, we agreed that we would work together to form a Confucius Institute here. 
When Hanban approved it, then I received an email from Provost Susan Martin and asking me whether or not I could serve uh, as the director of Confucius Institute. I thought this would be a great opportunity to serve UT as well as the local community, so I said yes. When I was hired to run the International House, I was informed at that time that this would be one of my projects, would be helping with bringing the Confucius Institute to campus in terms of facilities and making arrangements, helping to plan the inauguration, that sort of thing. When we first designed the inauguration events and uh, we thought for the uh, uh, stage gala show. It would be nice to really mix uh, what the Southeast University could bring to UT as well as what we can show them. Uh, so then we come up with the idea of East meets West. So the uh, inauguration stage gala show actually was performed by not only the student art troops from Southeast University, but also our own UT faculty, staff, and students. I think people enjoyed seeing the costumes and the native, the, the in instruments that come from uh, China and hearing the music if they've never heard it before. For the inauguration, when Southeast University's uh, student art troupe came to Knoxville, in addition to their performance uh, on the UT campus, they actually also went to local high schools and middle schools to do some interactions with our local uh, school kids, and it was uh, very successful. We've already seen the beginning of Chinese language instruction, which is very important for us. We have increasing numbers of students as well as community members who want to learn Chinese. And so through our collaboration, we are able to enhance our faculty through the teachers who come to us from China, through the Confucius Institute, and offer a robust program of Chinese language. Starting from this semester, the Confucius Institute has been helped us in our language class teaching. So they have two professors from Southeast Universities who came to UT last semester and then now they are both teaching our regular class, language classes. They also help pairing up our students with Chinese native speakers so that it's like a language partnership and so our students can also practice Chinese outside the classroom. We also offer non-credit Chinese language classes here and uh, for example, the basic Chinese, intermediate Chinese, business Chinese, and the people from both UT community as well as the local community, they come to take these classes. And Computer Institute has a lot of resources. So like last semester, there were a few events that they hosted that were really well attended. For example, they hosted a moon festival and uh, I encouraged many of my students to go and uh, I went there and I saw many of my students there. So that was, that was a good thing, and so they went there and they, they had tried some mooncake. They also learned about the history of Moon Festival. We also work with uh, local communities as well as the UT community uh, in terms of other kinds of uh, cultural programs. And they also uh, did a movie month in October, last October. So they showed four Chinese movies, one every week. And uh, we also encourage our students to go to watch a movie. We were trying to figure out what would be the best way to share the Chinese culture with the UT community. So we decided to set up uh, some posters to introduce about the uh, history, you know, the origin of the Chinese New Year, the customs of Chinese New Year, uh, what we eat during Chinese New Year, and uh, what we don't do during the Chinese New Year. They were doing a, an event over in the library and they were running around giving everybody little red envelopes. So what we did was we actually brought back real Chinese <coughs> dollar beers, okay, the IMB, and uh, give out free to whoever uh, passed by and uh, attended the uh, events in the library. <laughs> 
hosted a performance by Hangzhou Normal University during the Chinese New Year in the UC Auditorium. It was an excellent program. So they are, they are really supportive in everything we do here. For example, they are sponsoring us on the cooking night next week, and also yeah, on the uh, karaoke, Chinese karaoke context in April. Uh, because of the people they have and also the resources they have, then we can do more things. We will also have the first Confucius Institute Day on September 27th of this year, which will be a global event. So all of the Confucius Institutes around the world will celebrate. Uh, the 10th anniversary of Hanban and the Confucius Institutes around the world. So, happy 10th anniversary. And I want to wish you the very best on your 10th anniversary. Congratulations to Hanban for the 10th anniversary. Congratulations for 10 years. Congratulations, Hanban, on 10 years of Confucius Institutes. Heartfelt congratulations to Hanban for 10 years of serving as a terrific ambassador.